Pittsburgh Steelers fans. Pump your brakes, nation. Everybody out there in the live chat, everybody that's within the sound of my voice, whether you hear this tomorrow on the audio platform, thanks for joining us for another episode of the Steel Curtain Network Pump Your Brakes podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Tate, here with the other two co-hosts, the Triple OG, Shannon White. Shannon, what's happening? Oh, I'm just, the draft's getting closer and I'm getting more and more pumped and amped up, so I'm ready to roll tonight. Yeah, man, a week from right now to kick off. We probably, at this time, I imagine be waiting on, on the commanders to pick a week from right now. No, a week from tomorrow. Tomorrow. A week from tomorrow, yeah. Today, today's Wednesday. My bad. So, yeah, another day. You're rushing week. it as much as I am. I am, man. <laughs> but, yeah, we got the fella behind the signs trying to get everybody get their algorithm up. The big homie, the little fella, the one, the only, Big G. What's up, Big G? What's cracking, Tate Boy Fresh and Shannon, man? Hey, man, before we even get started tonight, man, my son-in-law, man, you know, he worked for them Buckeye boys. He, you know, he do a little something for the university and all whatever else. GA and doing his shooting as normal. This joker bet me tonight that the Chicago Bears is going to finish with a better regular season record than the Pittsburgh Steelers. Y'all know who rock with me and rock with Tate. Y'all know how I get on with the betting. I got 30 minutes of corner time riding on it, boy. I'm about to be a rich man here in a minute on that corner time with a so, lot of betting. So he's he's not he's not on one of these podcasts. So like, will he be at your house with your daughter and you really make him go stand in the corner and watch him for however long? <laughs> and I'm going to record it and put it on social media and I might send it to Mod so he can post it. I'm trying to tell you, bro. I, I get on with that corner time, dog. Because you're going to bet me that the Bears is going to finish with a better record than the Steelers? Have you lost your mind? But, but that's another conversation. Is, is he a Bears fan? Diehard Bears. He, he, take, he taking my daughter, dog. He converting my daughter to a Bear. I'm sorry about that, dog. He trying to take her away from Steeler Nation, man. You don't leave Steeler Nation, bro. She was born in it. You don't leave Steeler Nation? She trying yeah, to get her to go for them garbage Bears. Get up out of here. That's how it usually happens, though. My my wife is a Steelers fan. She claimed she was a Steelers fan before me, but yeah, whatever. And but you know, I don't know how my my mom. I told y'all before she could care less about football. But if you ask her, she's in a group or somewhere with her friends. Who's your football team? She's gonna say the Steelers. Big facts, Amen. and Sandy. Big facts, and Sandy. <laughs> way to go, Mama. And my sister, pretty much the same way. She's a Steelers fan, so. But Big facts to Courtney, too. Big facts. <laughs> my brother is an Eagles fan, so I don't know how that happened. He, but, was, uh, he was He just wanted to be different. Yeah. Well, no, he, he 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 really liked Randall Cunningham when he was at that impressionable yeah. age. Mm-hmm. So that was his favorite player. He was he, fun. He was fun, yeah. Stuck with him from there. Hey. I don't know. He, he liked hey, it. He liked, NFL uh, said I need to dump my, my daughter need to dump that dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he, he is an Ohio, Ohio State dude and he worked for the university. So Yeah, man, he ain't going nowhere. He home. <laughs> yeah, man, but I don't know if I agree with that, though, Big G. Mm. He's going to beat the uh, better record than the Steelers. That's what he said. Bears going to be better, though. I think they can get nine or ten games this year. Hey, the team. Lions are better. The Packers are better. Um, so and the beat. Vikings... If they get the quarterback situation, uh, that that's going to be a tougher division than he thinks. It is going to be tougher, but I still got them when they won seven games last year. <clears throat> so, Take Brian Cass said to tell my son-in-law to go kick rocks. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's what I'm talking about, y'all. <laughs> get the let kick. Go, let me go to the comment. We can see what they saying. Who said it? Brian Cass. Brian Cass was talking mess. Somebody else said my son-in-law got to get kicked to the curb. Said my daughter need to drop that dude. <laughs> it's a lot going on over there, dog. <laughs> get to kick it. <laughs> oh yeah, my man. God. Mm. What's up, F- Chaz H? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. San Diego. Yeah, he he beats life in the ring. Kenneth right McNair Jr. What's happening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got the homie, homie Claude in the building. Mm-hmm. The Steelers do have the third, third toughest schedule, Reginald Rivers. 
That's because they play in the toughest division. That's these games with the toughest teams. Dog, we going five and we going five and zero oh in, in our division, or six and zero, oh, five and one in our division, six and zero. Oh. We ain't worried about our division. No, no, BG. I, I hope I hope for four and two this year. Well, we you. still we still got to figure out the quarterback situation before I make predictions. <clears throat> right, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. Now. Said, put put your son your son in law in the matrix with Claude. <laughs> <laughs> He about to be spending the night in the Matrix. As <laughs> Dresden, what's happening, homie, man? Mm -hmm. I seen you uh, on Moats today. They, they they posted your mock draft, man. You won't you won't let go of this. Uh, what's the corner name from uh, Clemson? Wiggins. Nate Wiggins. Yeah, that's Dresden. Won't let go of Wiggins, man. He keep putting Wiggins out there as the number one pick. He's wigging out on Wiggins. <laughs> Big fact, Shannon. As president, <laughs> you you might be going in the matrix with Claude too. <laughs> spin a night, spin a night. <laughs> Get spin a that, night. I mean, I wrote somebody. Wrote, I read an article today from Steeler Depot, I believe. I can't remember. They all, but talking about how how uh, Wiggins is a good cover guy, but he's just not a good tackler. And he's one hundred seventy five pounds. In the play, he's kind of thin, right? <laughs> Yeah, so Mr. Mr. Wood C, believers, Mark Lancaster, everybody, what's happening? What is hey, he? If you're watching on YouTube, don't go nowhere. We're gonna be right back. We're gonna take a quick break. If you listen on audio, we gotta hear a few words from our partners, pay some bills. Then we're gonna get back in here and get us get to get it started with our Steelers either or to see where. Shannon and Big G stand on a couple of these different questions we got, all related to Pittsburgh and the Steelers. So we'll be right back after this. And we're back on the Pump Your Breaks podcast. Mm -hmm. Your boy Tate again with Big G and the Triple OG Shannon White. And we're going to get started on some of this. Uh, what we came up with is, and towards the end, it's going to get to uh, draft picks, right? Where we, is this guy or that guy, right? Mm -hmm. But right now, we're just going to talk about some different Steelers stuff and Pittsburgh mm -hmm. stuff. One, one thing, you saw the cover to the show tonight. We had a choice of, some Pittsburgh staples, right? Yep. We talking about Big G, our specialty. Some sandwiches. Big sandwich. sandwich. Not sandwich. Sandwiches. Big sandwich. big sandwich. The big sandwich. <laughs> the big the big bread. Big sandwich with that big tomato and the lettuce and about nineteen pieces of sandwich meat on there with some big cheese. The big sandwich. Yeah, man. So, real quick. If you were Pittsburgh, Shannon and Big G, and you're going for one of them staple sandwiches, mm. are you getting the Pittsburgher with the fries and coleslaw? Mm. Or are you getting the Roethlisberger with the eggs and the cheese and everything else on it? Mm. <laughs> well, now, <clears throat> I've not had the pleasure of having either. Mm. And mm. I like less... Vegetables on it. So I'm a said it. I'm a meat <laughs> eater, baby. I'm, I'm old school. I'd have been a T-Rex. So um, I would probably go with the Roethlisberger because, one, I think there might be less vegetation upon it. And, two, it's named after my favorite player. So I, I would have to go Roethlisberger. Yeah. Tay, you already – Tay, you already know which way. Don't get fine, Tay, because I seen I seen them. Well, I just had nodding my head in agreement with Shannon. I understand where you're coming from. I don't want no trouble, man. <laughs> hey, I'm going with that burger, dog. That Roethlis burgers. Mm -hmm. I didn't have both of them, bro. But that Roethlis burger is something special, dog. That that Roethlis burger. Yeah, it's, that more, Roethlis it's, it's, it's more a hoagie. It's good. Yes, yeah, yeah, but it's it's something special about it, bro. It's something special. Listen. After I ate it the first time when I ate it, I didn't even feel like going to the game no more. I was sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> I was ready to go somewhere and get sideways, though, for, for at least about 100, 
about 120 minutes. A good 120 minute good one. <laughs> bro, that Robinsberger had me feeling good, bro. I wish they had caught you on camera asleep. That would have been Straight awesome. Asleep. Man, I didn't even feel like going to the stadium. Man, I said, man, come on, let's go back in the car. I'm I'm good. I'm gonna take me a big nap. Because 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 that sandwich was killing them. It was killing so, them, bro. The, the Roethlisberger is, is the stack layers of steak, sausage, mm. egg, cheese. Mm. 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 I can't go wrong with that. Sausage, egg, and cheese. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Boy, you making my mouth water right now. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. But that Roethlisberger is killing them. Killing them. So let me yeah. see. Let me see what's on the Pittsburgh. Right. Yeah, this is just a burger top with coleslaw and French fries and whatever you want it's on. Right. It's all right. Yeah. That's now, Polish, is it bro. That's... any brothers coleslaw? Because that's just chopped up cabbage thrown on there. Big facts, Shannon. Yeah. That yeah. ain't coleslaw Big, like from the South. Big facts. Big what fact. I what I call coleslaw. Yeah, I'm a I'm a, I'm a coleslaw connoisseur. Yes, mm -hmm. <clears throat> definitely yeah, a coleslaw it. connoisseur. You know what coleslaw I like, Big G? Who? I like that famous recipe, Lee. Famous recipe, Lee. killing them, killing them coleslaw. I love that yep. coleslaw, man. Yeah, killing it them. Beautiful. It, it ain't one out here nowhere by me, but yeah. Next time I come to Maryland, I'm gonna bring you some, dog. I'm gonna bring you a big container. <laughs> I promise you, next time I come to Maryland, I got you. Okay. Okay. Well, that's a good gift. That's a good yeah. gift. Oh, it, it, anything food, if you get here in a timely manner, though, Shannon, <laughs> yeah. you can't be mad. He better be flying or have a cooler and drive. Yeah, I'm going to put in a cooler. Yeah, I have a cooler, mm -hmm. yeah. Next time I come, I might get you a Kewpie burger, some Lee's chicken coleslaw, and a Fat Jack's pizza. Last time I had a Kewpie burger was 21. <laughs> July, July 10th of 21. <laughs> That's the last yeah. time I was home. We came to pick my mom up. Yeah. And then uh before that, it was 17, man. I got you. Yeah. So next like, time I only had two QB burgers in the last seven years. Six, yeah, I had one that I had one today for lunch. I had one today for lunch. And it was beautiful. And for and for those that don't know, QB Burger is a place in our hometown, Lima, Ohio. It's actually the dude Dave Thomas that started Wendy's, used to work at QP and mm -hmm. stole all wind all QP's business model and started his Wendy's in Columbus, Ohio. Big facts. And the old windy square patties and the chili and the malts. Oh, that's QP. <laughs> Show did had a big a big double today, Tate. A Ooh. big double. A big QP's double. I Show bet you QP's is a lot better because oh, all still... the fast food places done went cheap. They have no quality and the food sucks. Shannon, QP's grind their burgers up on the spot on yeah. the site. I guarantee grind, you it's better. The towels is hanging in the cooler, dog. They ground they meet up fresh every day. Big burger. Yeah. It's really good. But that's where the idea came from. But I like mine. I get a double with cheese and bacon on wheat bread. I don't, I don't like all that buns. Give me that little thin wheat bread. Big burger. Yeah, you don't want too much bread. Yeah, no, nah, no. Nah, I'm like you said, I'm a meat person. Yeah, yeah. Come with the sandwich. <clears throat> yeah, I'm I'm six, I'm six two, about two sixty. So yeah, I'm a I'm a meat person. <laughs> mm -hmm. But fellas, okay, so both y'all picked the the Roethlis burger. Yes. Yep. I'll be different. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna pick the Pitts burger just because I'm a burger guy. I, if it ain't real coleslaw, I might hold the coleslaw and just eat the burger. I keep I keep fries on my burger though. Yeah. That won't bother me. I'm usually taking a bite of the burger and stuff on my face with fries anyway. Yep. So can't be too much different. Facts. That's all facts. But, yeah, okay, so now let's get into the two-minute thing. Some of this stuff is funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I want to know, all the marbles on the line, you got a two-minute drill. Mm -hmm. Down four, you need a touchdown to win the game. Mm -hmm. Football does you no good. Mm -hmm. You at your own 30-yard line. Mm-hmm. I bet everybody in the live chat and both you guys will want Ben Roethlisberger, Big Ben. Absolutely. That's my Absolutely. choice. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that, that's your choice, but he, he's not one of the options here. <laughs> mm. That means I'm dealing with – I might be dealing with a scrub. <laughs> Come on, Tate. Come on with them if options. Is, if you're a 1980s Pittsburgh Steelers fan, you remember these guys. Oh, yeah. If you want Mark Malone mm. or, or Bubby Brister. With the money on the line? With the money on the line. Who 
With which quarterback you send in the game to get that get that money, Big G? Give me Mark Malone. I ain't fooling with Brubby Brister, dog. Not for the money. Not for the money ball. I'm old enough to remember Brubby Brister. Yeah, I remember Mark Malone too, bro. Mark Malone was a better. Bubby Brister was not a bad quarterback, but Mark Malone wasn't a bad quarterback neither. So I, I, I'd rather have Mark Malone, especially considering they played like that same era and had some of the same weapons and all whatever else. Give me, give me Mark Malone. I, ain't, I ain't taking Bubby dog. I'm not doing that. Uh, there's a reason we got up off of him. I get it. Yeah, I mean, so what about you, Shannon? Everything equal, same skill position, talent. You know, I would have to go Mark Malone as well. Mm -hmm. Bobby Brister can make a big play, but he can make it for either team at any moment. He was the definition of erratic. So I will stick with Mark Malone, who was better <laughs> functioning if he was set in optimal conditions. Mm -hmm. With Brister, it didn't matter. He could make a big play for either team. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey man, I'm kind of like uh, the homie Pittsburgh Toddy, man. Mm. Bubby Brister. I, I might take Bubby, man, because Bubby didn't have no nerves, man, which is why he could be a little bit reckless sometimes. Full but, reckless. But he wasn't going. He wasn't going to uh, cur away in the in the face of adversity. He 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 like Coach T say, you know, we stare adversity in the face and don't blink. That's Bubby, and. Bubby has some legs, though. Yeah, he is from scrambling. Hey, Mark Malone had a 90-yard touchdown reception. I remember Mark that. Mark Malone story. could run. I remember watching yeah. that in slow motion. Oh, but it, was <laughs> real, but it was real Super time. I do remember that. Yeah. yeah. Super Malone big facts. Yep. Yep. Yeah, but uh, – But I, I like to call on Malone the lips, too, Tate. No, Malone I remember the lips. Bubby more the lips. No, nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, man. Check, Ooh, check your facts. Man. Tell them, Shannon. I'm about, I'm about to check it. Go ahead, keep talking. I'm about to check it. I'm gonna look at career numbers. No, I'm just looking at the years Mark Malone played. I think Lips came about '84. Mm -hmm. I think he did '84, '85 is when Lips came. Malone replaced Terry Bradshaw. Facts. Yeah, Bradshaw. 81, 82, 81, 82 is what? Oh, 80, 82, 83 is when Bradshaw. Malone was, 81, 82. Malone was out in '87. Yeah. Yep. So, Louis, I mean, Bubby Brister came after Mark Malone. Facts. Like in what? 89? 88? No, it must have been like 87, 88. No, it was, it was mid 80s. Mm -hmm. Right. And Louis <laughs> Lips got drafted by the Steelers in 84. Yeah. So he, he, he did have three years with Mark Malone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he was there from 84 to, to 91. Bubby Brister. 88. Bubby Brister, 88. To the Steelers in 86. 86. Yeah, I knew it was mid-80s. He 80. got me a he got me a bad belt in one time after church. It was his fault. And I, that's a story for another time. See, Shannon, now do, do you remember <laughs> if Bubby Brister took Mark Malone's starting position? How'd that how'd go down? I think Malone got hurt, bro. If I remember right, Mark Malone got hurt. If I, if now, I remember honestly, right, I do not remember. Yeah, I think I think Mark Malone got hurt, and Brister came in and started. Because I thought they was they was quarterbacks between Malone well, now, and Brister. I think Malone got hurt. When Brister did Cliff Stout play in the middle of them? Somewhere in there. He was in and, the middle and, of those two. Yeah, Cliff Stout Mal was back in the beginning of Malone. Yeah, yeah. I think I think I think Malone got traded, bro. If I remember right, Mark Malone got traded. I don't know if he got traded, but he went to the Chargers and somebody else for a couple of years. Yeah, yeah. And he was done. Yeah, big done. Big done. Cooked. He's he's look like Magnum Pi. Yep, he do. He looked too much like Magnum. He looked like Magnum, yep. which, which 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 probably like in that day he probably like like Jimmy G's the. The, the, the best looking quarterback in the NFL. That probably Mark Malone back in the day. Oh, like, hey, the ladies liked him now, no doubt. He played Tom Selleck. <laughs> hey, that, that boy was putting on brute like this. <laughs> <laughs> he was putting on brute cologne like this. <laughs> okay. Next one. We got uh oh, this is a good one. Best yeah. hit. Yep. <laughs> was it Jerome Bettis, the bus? 
trucking Brian Erlacher? Or was it Rob Spillane meeting Derrick Henry in that hole? I got Take this one. While we go ahead, Shannon. I don't even know why we debate all day. Clearly. It was the best because that what started the the streak, and the Steelers didn't lose again, and they won the Super Bowl. And it was he set the tone when he ran over Erlacher. Now the hit Spillane put on Henry was great, but he didn't win the Steelers nothing. They didn't go on to win the Super Bowl, so it's Bussy. Bro, the wheels. Saying, uh, wheels. Bus, wheels, bus, dog. Bus, bus. Now, is that just because Bus is a more iconic, popular player? No, I told you. He, Bro, he Brian, set the tone for a magical season. Brian Erlacher is a top 10, maybe even top five linebacker, middle linebacker of all time. You're going, you're going, you're going too far, Big G. And he top got ten, tricked. top ten middle linebacker. And then got tricked. Pump your brakes, man. You said top five. Yeah, might have been top ten, but it would have been like nine, ten to twelve. But you said top five. You got to. He still smoked that boy. He smoked he him in the hole. He, he smoked did. him. He's, he smoked him and, and like and then after he smoked him, he got up and slammed the ball on him and looked at him like, "What? Hey, what is you gonna do? What? You you know how tough Erlacher was? Yeah, I never seen nobody else truck Erlacher. He smoked him, not in the hole, but he got trucked. Smoked him in the hole, just yep. pussy. And then, like I said, got up and slammed the ball and looked at him like, "What now? What yep. now, dog?" Come on, bro. The wheels, bro. Ain't nothing even to talk about. The wheels. Straight bus, huh? Straight bus. Okay, I don't. I don't disagree. I don't disagree. I'm with. I'm with you guys on that one. Okay. It's fourth and one. Mm -hmm. You need a yard. I wish I could have the wheels. You're not giving the ball to the bus. You're not giving the ball to Franco. You're not giving mm. the ball to Le'Veon. Mm. Your choices for this fourth and one are Barry Foster mm. or Rocky Blyer on a, on a fullback die. Who are you giving it to? Can I go first, Shannon? Yes. Rocky. Tell me why. Because Rocky going to get that touchdown. Barry might get cracked in the backfield, dog. <laughs> Barry, Barry, I done seen Barry get cracked in the backfield. I done seen him get cracked. Don't, don't, that's, don't, don't, that's, don't, Barry, don't Barry Father still got the Steeler all-time rushing record for a season? Some, yeah, something like that. But but that's why Bay, on goal line, Barry wasn't getting the ball. Bam was getting the ball. Bam Morris was getting the ball, going in there and scoring. Rocky Rocky was in the backfield with Franco, and on fourth and one for the six, Rocky getting the ball, dog. Rocky, the up back getting the ball, bro. Rocky gonna get that touchdown. So no, nah, I ain't. Mm -mm. I know Barry was a better back, but get on four for one. Give me Rocky, dog, for the touchdown for the TD. Okay. Shannon, wow, is wow. it my turn? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Rocky Blyer. Facts. Rocky Blyer, come back from knob, miss a part of his foot, had his leg hurt, and you know he in the, you know. Mr. Rooney said, if you can make it back, we got a spot for you. He accomplished things back then. Nobody thought he could. The guy was a warrior. He caught big plays, touchdowns in the Super Bowl. He big had fact. a 70-yard run, even though he was not fast. The big guy, fact. if he put his mind to it, he got it done. You, you know, that guy had determination. And mm -hmm. if I had to count on one guy of those two to get it on fourth and one, I'm going Rocky all day. Give him the ball. And get out the way. <laughs> Give me the ball and go. Okay. Uh, Barry Foster got a career average of 4.3 Rocky per carry. Rocky Blyers is 4.2. Mm, that's that's facts. That's big facts right there, Tate. Which is, uh, which is good for the time because everybody was playing the run back then. Mm -hmm, sure was. Uh, Barry Foster got 26 career touchdowns, rushing touchdowns. Rocky Blyer had 23. And he was shared the backfield with dang on uh uh to a Franco. Give him the pill. Yep. Give him the pill, dog. He 
ain't sharing it with Franco and was getting his. Give that boy the pill and get out the way. Just get I don't out the disagree. way. I disagree. I'll go Rocky Blyer just for Steeler lore and Steeler history and you know that that uh that uh steel curtain defense team and that offense with Bradshaw and Swan and Stallworth and Franco mm-hmm. and Rocky and Mike Webster and mm-hmm. all those guys, man. Mm-hmm. Hey, we love Barry Foster, but yeah. we're talking about a one year wonder against the guy with four Super Bowls who overcome everything he did. It's got to be Rocky. Big facts. Big facts. Well, and I like this next question too. Big G. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised I ain't heard it from uh, your boy Ma. You know, I was, what he you said. Know, you know, I was bragging about so I'm surprised I hadn't heard it. Mm-hmm. I didn't know uh, Barry Foster was from down there in Duncanville. Went to Duncanville. Yeah, he he ain't gonna be bragging. He ain't gonna be bragging. He he ain't gonna be bragging because it's it's the big bias when it comes to to Steeler Nation. Mm-hmm. He ain't. He didn't even take bring up Lima Swede in front of him, and I bet you you're gonna hear some big bias. He ain't even gonna want to talk about that Lima Swede. He was Lima Swede was the greatest thing in sliced bread with Vince till he got to Pittsburgh, and he hated on him. Hey, Big G, look at this one. Hmm. (laughs) Big facts. (laughs) Big facts. That's for sure. Big facts. Big facts, 100% AFL 67. That's, that's, 100%. That's, that's AFL the quadruple OG. It's Shannon the triple OG. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Oh, goodness. <clears throat> so, yeah, that was a good one. All right. How can we get it off her? <clears throat> one more before break. Then we're going to get in. We're going to take a break real quick and come back and get into the draft. My, uh, the draft, either ors. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, so Steelers, 40-yard 40 40 yard race at practice. 40-yard dash. 40-yard dash. Mm-hmm. It's like the 40 at the combine. Yep. Who are you taking, Calvin Austin the third, or Mike Wallace? Oh. You want me to go first? Yeah, man, because I got to really think about this one, bro. <laughs> I, 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 to Ooh. me, Mike Wallace, all day, he had easy speed. Ooh. When he got stride, when he got reached full speed, it was over. He could actually – you'd watch him speed up to catch the ball. He had that extra gear. And I've got I, – I, I know Al, Al, Calvin Austin's fast, but I ain't seen that yet. And mm. I know Wallace had it, so I'm going to go Mike Wallace. Man – Man, man, Mike Mike Wallace got in game speed. Like, see, this is why I, I I gotta go with Wallace for this one because Mike Wallace and Willie Parker was close to around the same era. They didn't. I don't know if they ever played with his, against each other, but I remember seeing how fast Willie Parker was. Willie Parker was super fast, and Wallace made that boy look like he was standing still. <laughs> Mike Mike Wallace was big fast, bro. Yep. So I don't. Combine time. I think Austin might got him in combine time. I'm, I'm pretty sure. But I'm talking about in the game with shoulder pads and helmets on. Oh, no. Wallace would get to, that young money. Take take boy fresh. That young money was some dogs, bro. Young, young, young Antonio young Brown, dogs. Wallace, Sanders. Oh, God. And I, think, and I think I agree with y'all as far as in game speed. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. A little bigger, a little more powerful. But what we said, the question was, in practice, yeah, a 40. And the times make it close. I mean, because Mike Wallace ran a 4-3-3 at his combine. Calvin Austin ran a 4 2 9. That's Ooh. just a matter of not if you get a good start, Mike Wallace, you're gonna be right with him. Yep. No, yep. definitely. Yep. So I'm gonna go with the little fella, man. I think he's just littler mm. and a and a half step faster. Yeah. Maybe but we, uh, but we talking about world class speed with both of them. Yep, facts. big old facts. So who 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 who's your honorable mention fast guy? Parker, Parker, <laughs> Willie Parker, Channing, <laughs> uh, Joy Stone. Oh, uh, yeah. Stone. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, Dwight Stone probably. <clears throat> oh, that's a good one. Mm-hmm. Giorgio was fast too. He didn't never do nothing. But big, big fast. So, but you know who I smoke them all? Who? Man, I he don't want to tell us. Yeah, he went to the I thing. My channel. I keep knocking this little core. I got a short. <laughs> but, hey, my boy. Who? Hot Rod. Rob Woodson? Don't sleep on Hot Rod. Rob Woodson ain't smoking Willie Parker tape. <laughs> Come on, dog. Stop. I need my stopping sign. Dog, he ain't smoking. Dog, Willie Parker was fast, bro. Like, super fast. Rob Woodson Rob- beat them all at the hurdles. Rob, Rob, Rob Woodson was, ooh. He was a great hurdler. Willie Parker was 4 2 eight. That's what I'm saying. Tay. That's, Tay. That's faster than Calvin Austin. Tay, Willie Parker was up out of there, bro. <laughs> he was up out of there. He'd hit that gear. He'd hit that gear and be gone. Oh, hold on. Let's leave with my boy now. What he ran? 4 2 9. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but Rob was big, too, bro. Rod was big. Yeah, he six, was big. Six, six foot, like two oh four. Yep. Yeah. Well, how much Willie Parker weighed on? Willie Parker probably weighed about about. 200. I bet you. I bet you weighed a little bit more than that. I bet you Willie Parker was closer to two ten. Compact, bro. Compact. He was compact. <laughs> Willie Parker. He just looked was small because the bus. Five, five ten two twelve. Yo, yeah, 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 yeah. He just looks small because Jerome Bettis weighed like 290. <laughs> Out there playing running back. Now everybody say his, his playing weight was 260 by midseason. The bus was like 285, realize, bro. Willie Parker got the longest run in Super Bowl history. To the house. <laughs> to uh, the Mitchell house, Walton, bro. Mitchell, off, Mitchell, the, Mitchell. off the right-hand <laughs> side. To the house. To the house. I didn't know, I didn't know it was longer than, than uh, Marcus Allen's run against the – Yep. In Detroit, in Detroit, off the right to the house. And we got we got to get to these next questions. Where? Yeah, yeah, okay. Here we come. But so, hey, if you're watching on YouTube, stay with us. We're not going anywhere. We're going to take a quick pause. If you're listening on the audio, we're going to hear a few words from our partners, and we'll be right back to get to the Steelers 2024 draft, either or, to get Big G and Triple OG Shannon's perspective if they were GMs and these were the players they were picking between. So we right back after this. And we're back on the Pump Your Breaks podcast. Ready to get it in for this Either or, Pittsburgh Steelers, 2024 NFL Draft, either or. So, now I want y'all to pick between the two players that I mentioned, all positions of need for the Pittsburgh Steelers, and tell me why you why you picked the person you picked. Now, you both picked the same people, mm-hmm. but you give like 30 seconds of why you picked this particular player between over the other player. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay, so you draft in a tackle. Yep. You draft between either Amarius Mims or Talia Fuaga. Who you got? Shannon, I'm going to go first on this one, and you take the next one first. Give me Fuaga, right. bro. Give me Fuaga. Fuaga will start day one for the Pittsburgh Steelers <clears throat> if they draft him at 20. He will be a minimum 10-year starter for the Pittsburgh Steelers. A minimum 10. And him and Jones might be the best tackle combination in the NFL by year two. That's when I, That's how good Fuwaga is. He, Him and Jones, the only team that I think would have better tackles might be the Detroit Lions. And go ask Cribs and all the mother boys to run the ball up in Detroit – how that feel running behind two dog tackles all the time? Because that's what you're going to get in Fawaga and Jones. Shannon, I give the floor to you, dog. No, I wholeheartedly agree. I said Fawaga is the only guy I would trade up for. Mm-hmm. If he fell to 13, 14, I, I think they'd have to consider trading up for him. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that, you know, he's a uh, 
multi-year starter. He's the perfect right tackle. He's a generational talent, in my opinion. Mm. I believe he could be a pro bowler, even as a rookie, maybe. He's going to be Ooh. top He's going to be top five right tackle in the NFL his rookie year. Mm. And I, I love Fuaga. Mims has got only eight starts. He's got tons of potential, but I, mm. I'll take the proven generational guy ever, every day, all day. Mm-hmm. I'm with it. Take what you're doing. Well, uh, uh. Is Fuaga a left tackle or right tackle? Right tackle. So he come yeah. in and, and take damn more position immediately. Adios, muchachos. They'll take Mr. Broderick Moore. Jones and put him on the left. Yeah, yeah. Adios, muchachos. Not adios. Not no. That's not adios, muchachos. We are gonna keep Dan Moore, but Dan Moore, where my other son? <clears throat> but y'all know y'all know where he going. I just gotta find the son. Keep going, he take. He's going to the bench. He going to but, the uh, bench. So, do, does does um, Amaris Mims if he hit does he have a higher upside? No, no. I don't think so either. Not. I, I, I think, think so Mims could be really good, but I'm telling you, I think that one day we'll say, "Well, Fargo's made five Pro Bowls in a row. He's made three First Team All Pro teams in a row. He's that good." <clears throat> I'd be hard pressed to find a right tackle in the NFL in the AFC that's better than him. Within by right now, two. yeah, as a rookie, yeah. <clears throat> I seriously, I mean, I'm not joking around. If you go right too. tackle in the AFC, looking around like, nah, this is gonna be hard to find one better than him. You'd be hard pressed right now to find a, a right tackle better than Fuaga mm-hmm. in the whole league. No, in the AFC. In the AFC, that so be hard pressed. If, if, if Alt gets drafted by Tennessee, he'll be better, right? Man, they right there, dog. Alt's a left okay. tackle. Uh, Alt's gonna play left. Yeah, Alt will play left. He ain't gonna play right. What about uh, oh Olu, the kid from Penn State? I've seen, I've seen board where he's dropped. Do you do you take either either Olu or Maris Mims between those two? Mims. I don't like the kid from Penn State. Go back and put the game tape on against Michigan. Put the game tape on against Ohio State. Heck, put the game tape on against Iowa, Wisconsin. He was out there getting murder showed. That's why they can't. Penn State can't beat nobody, Claude, because they because he get murder showed against the teams that he's supposed to get to be beaten down. He out there getting smoked. He from he, he from right here, the high school that's that's in my neighborhood. The dude Olu, mm-hmm. but uh, mm-hmm. down here in Southern Maryland. What about you, Shannon? Between those two? No, I already, I already. Oh, you mean between the Penn State guy and yeah. Mims? No, yeah. Uh, yeah, I would do Mims. Uh, I, I'm not fond of the Penn State. Mm. Man, do y'all do y'all like J.C. Latham better than Mims? No, I like J.C. Latham better than Mims. I said, do you like J.C. Latham better than Mims? And the answer yeah, is yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, yes, I like J.C. Latham better than Mims. Yeah, I do. He is more proven. Mm-hmm. He, he he's a plug in day one too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Go back and look proven, at what he yeah. did. Go back and look and see what he did against Georgia and against Michigan and all. Yeah, he was out there killing them. He plays right too, right? Mm-hmm. Right tackle. Yep. Okay. All right. So the next one, Big G. <clears throat> NFL said Big G can't do nothing in thirty seconds. <laughs> yep. Big facts. <laughs> <laughs> Big facts, AFL. Big facts. You know you, you know you got that bumper. Yep. When I say bumper, it means that's what you call when you bump your gums. He got a bumper. <laughs> yep. Yep. Hey man, so the next one we're gonna talk about center, and this is a is a is associated also with a round. So mm-hmm. do you take Barton in one? First round, or Frazier in two, and if you pick Frazier in two, who are you taking in one? Shannon, go ahead. Well, if everybody kind of already knows, I want Frazier in two. Mm-hmm. I want him in the second, even though they may have to trade up to get him. Mm-hmm. Uh, depending on if they can move back in the first, uh, but I I like Barton. He's a very good athlete. But he's only played six games at center as a freshman. Mm-hmm. I, I'm done with moving guys. I want a guy that comes in. He is a center. 
He's got multi years experience at center because it matters at center. You got to have the mindset. You got to have the leadership, the communication. You got to understand the position and all the responsibilities and how to develop a relationship with your quarterback. Mm -hmm. And those are all things that it's hard for guys who play on the outside of the line to understand where it's more of a natural thing for a center who's been a center. Mm -hmm. So I, I really like Frazier in the second. That would open up the first round to uh, you could go wide receiver, you could go tackle, you could go cornerback. Mm -hmm. and and then get your Frazier, you know, if you move up and make sure you get him in the second round. So um, I, I would have to go the best value. I'd mm -hmm. love to get a, a, a top tackle. That's what I want in the first round. Mm -hmm. But what if one of the receivers is there that you wasn't expected to be there? Mm -hmm. What if uh, uh, Mitchell uh, or Arnold, one of them two cornerbacks, fall to 20? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I I would probably want them before I would want a guy who's a project to tackle. Mm -hmm. I agree. Shannon, Shannon and Tate, I would take Frazier in a second because I agree with everything Shannon said. I think that Barton has not doesn't have that many career starts at center. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, because I take it from a guy that played on the line, like from the time he's a little kid, you know, it, that's a big transition. Yeah, because yeah. because you're calling you're the quarterback of the offensive line. So you have to know what everybody on the line yeah. is doing, your responsibility. Plus, you got to know what's going on behind you from the quarterback and the, the guys behind you. You know, so you have to you have to switch guys and flip plays and all. That's a hard transition. So I, I go with Frazier. Now, in the first round, that gives me a wild card player. So if a guy like J.C. Latham or Mims is not available in the first round or got a Fuaga. Hey man, you I wouldn't wait to the third to get your receiver. You know, I think you can wait to get maybe the 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 tight the tackle from Notre Dame, maybe in the third or fourth. So maybe in the first round, you 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 take a guy like Adnan Mitchell at WR if he's there, or maybe Thomas, wide receiver out of LSU. You know, you get a guy to go with Pickens, you know, in the first round, because now you got your wide receiver in your and your and your center, and then Later on up the road, you know, you get a guy that backs up Dan Moore and will push him for position, starting position. And if neither one of those guys fit, then, hey, next draft, we go get our tackle. Yep. So that's my thoughts, Tay. I like that, Big G. I like Just, I like, Yeah, level, man. Just level. Being mm -hmm. different. You know, like, I, like I keep saying, man, I can deal, if I had to, with Dan Moore for one more year. Mm -hmm. oh. I can deal with, with Van Jefferson being my number two. Mm -mm. You know, nope. um, that's got a little headache. I, I get it. I mean, you know, <laughs> but like, 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 like we keep saying, uh, Dan Moore wasn't really a big problem when Mason Rudolph got in there. That's facts. How to get the ball out on time and thus yep. help open the run game up a little bit by completing some passes. Yep, but, mm. but I gotta say this the <laughs> last year. Russell Wilson held the ball longer than any quarterback. Guess who was number two? Fields. Fields. They, I mean, they, they're going to get killed if you put more out there again. <laughs> but, but you, but you know, know what they do better than, than Kenny and Mason is move. Yeah. Skedaddle. Yeah. Skedaddle. Yeah, but they were sacked more than any quarterbacks. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I think you can't I, always get away. You can't always get away. I don't. I, I think they cleaned that up this year, though. I mm -hmm. hope because the right game and design quarterback runs like the defense will be a little bit more off guard than just you know mm -hmm. five step drop looking all over the field letting and it still got a better line than than both Denver and Chicago had too. Not that it's big, great, but better than both their team. Big facts, absolutely. Well, we don't to be the the weak link. That's what mm -hmm. I'm talking about. And if you remember in our first and only mock draft thing we've done so far. I picked mm -hmm. Mitchell as my first pick. Mm -hmm. Then, no, Maybe. I could, I could, I don't. I'm with you now, Big Jim. You were saying it early, then you kind of switched. Now I think you might switch back. Like the value of center in the first round is just not. It's not there. In that premium pick at. Mm -mm. No. Even if you, if you go and get something else, and then you know, come mm -hmm. up and get Frazier early mm -hmm. in the second. 
38, mm-hmm. 39, something like that. You know, mm-hmm. I want Frazier in the second. I know we all agree that's a better value. But as somebody said today, if you redid the draft and Creed Humphrey was in there, he's going in the first. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's the best center in football. He would have been in the first if mm-hmm. you redid that draft. So, I mean, it's just like Detroit Lions last year, guys. They didn't go by the value at each pick. They went with what they needed, and they ended up in the NFC Championship game. I'm Big just saying, the true value is what it means to your team. That's mm-hmm. true. That's definitely 100% true. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, so as of right now, I still like the idea of a corner, a receiver. And I wouldn't be mad at Ty. Don't, don't get me wrong. Pittsburgh Steelers are getting a great player whenever they pick in the first and second round. Big facts. With that decision. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm, just, I'm just thinking out loud for myself of what how I may like to see it play out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let me see. As Dresden asked the question. Would I take Frazier or Xavier Leggett? I'm taking Frazier. All yeah. day, every day. I would have, I like Xavier Leggett a lot, but I can get I can get another comparable good receiver later in the, in that in that for that third round pick. Mm-hmm. Frazier opposed, might be the safest pick for the Steelers yeah. in the draft. Facts. Leggett had one big year because they only had a quarterback for one year. Mm-hmm. So I mean I'm not holding that against him, but Frazier's proven. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but but in receiver we kind of we kind of identify. <clears throat> more than not identify them by what they do when they do have a quarterback. Because if you don't have a quarterback, yeah, you're not doing yeah. nothing. <laughs> but that, that yeah, center to me is the biggest glaring hole they have. I yeah. agree. Yeah. I agree. But then like that, that, that's why we talk about as Dresden, potentially you get a potentially get a good receiver if one falls to you in round one with Thomas or Mitchell. Mm-hmm. And then still get Frazier in the second round, you don't need Leggett. Mm-hmm. You know, I agree. I agree, bro. I agree. Well, let's move to the next question. Uh, okay, Big G, this one's for, for you first. <laughs> okay. What is it? Either you trade up for Rome Odunze <gasps> or you trade for and sign Brandon Ayuk. Oh, Tay. Tay. And let's just hey, say. Matter. Let's just say you got on the second to get Ayuk, mm. and then you got to pay him. Mm. And to get Rome, you got to give him your twenty to move up. Say, say with the Falcons to eight, and you got to give him twenty, a second, and a, a fifth, a, a one of the one of the fourths this year, mm. and a and a and a third next year. So I could give him my twenty this year, a fourth, and a third next year to go up to Rome. Yeah. Not not give up my second? A no. fourth and a third? No, yeah. a, four, a, a third, a fourth. No, a third, a third, a fourth this year. My 20, the fourth this year, and a third next let's, year. Let, 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 let's, let's say one of your thirds this year and one of your thirds next year and pick right. 20 to go up Pick to. 20 and two-thirds to go yeah. get Rome? Yeah. I'm yeah. going to get Rome Oduze, dog. I'm not playing around with this. I'm not listen. I'm not paying Ayuk all that money. I, listen, Ayuk ain't been the number one receiver on the 49ers. I'm I, he's he's a dog. I'm not saying he's a trash, but he ain't number one. Rome can be number one from Steelers day one. And I'm not and Pickens ain't no scrub. <laughs> like he Pickens a dog, but Rome is a Rome is a beast, bro. Rome, Rome, Rome is a better prospect than Ayuk. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Ro- Romo Duce going to be in the Pro Bowl within two years. Every <laughs> dang on year thereafter. Ooh. Rome is that if Rome is that yeah. dog. Rome, you know, Tay, you seen it? You already done seen it. I, I convinced you about him. Yeah, you know, you know, I, I've been liking him though during the season, even. I said I didn't didn't even know his name because I like that number one from Washington. Mm-hmm. But Shannon, what, what what say you on this one? Well, I don't guess some options neither, is it? 
No, um, it's, it's go get Rome or IU. That's it. It's either or. Oh, so not neither. You know, you take nope. either and you put an N in the front and mm -hmm. you got neither. <laughs> no, um, my thing is I disagree that I do think Brandon uh, is the number one receiver for the 49ers. He's the only one that can stay healthy. I love Samuel, but he can't stay healthy. So they've had to rely on a hook. Now, I'm not excited about paying anybody four years, $100 million, mm -mm. when it probably is going to take 60, 70 guaranteed. I ain't giving it. When that. you don't have a proven quarterback. Mm -hmm. If you take a Duze, you don't have to pay him all that. And he can learn and develop with whoever you have at quarterback. If you got the answer on the roster already, or you have to look for one next year. So mm -hmm. if I had to pick the lesser of two evils, I would take trading up for a news Wrong. Wrong. Take, let them know. I'm, I'm going to keep saying it. I'm not going to stop saying it. He's Heinz Ward, bigger, faster, stronger. I keep telling y'all, I'm, I'm not. I'm telling y'all that's who that dude is. Heinz Ward Heinz was a beast for the Steelers. Rome, come on, bro. Come on, he's, man. He's a, he's a he's a faster, better route runner than Heinz Ward. He's Heinz, a monster. Heinz Ward's game was predicated on physicality and his blocking and his toughness and everything. And yeah, so Rome don't check all them boxes to Heinz Ward level, but he he. He's he's on that he's behind him a little bit, but he has some of those same traits and characteristics. But he's a better pure receiver and route runner. Man, wrong, so wrong. I like I, I like Ayuk. I don't like bringing him in and paying him twenty. I'm, I'm not completely sold him. I think he's a good player. I think mm -hmm. he'd definitely be a a a one B. But you don't pay your one B the, the top money. You know? mm -hmm. They got to save money for pickings coming up if that's the plan. Facts, you know? Tate. Let me say one more thing. If has anybody seen the statistics of the number two wide receiver in Arthur Smith's system the last four years? They they do not put up big numbers. No. They average about 500 yards total per season. Yeah. Two touchdowns, like big 40 facts. receptions. They, they that is not in this offense going to be a big production position. So is it going to be Pickens? That's going to drop to 500 yards, or would it be a hook that's going to get 500 yards? You don't want to pay a guy four years, 100 million for that production. Mm -mm. That's I agree. That's why I like going in the draft. And even if you don't, I mean, the, between the choice, I would trade up and get wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, agree. Agree. Getting the receiver in the first or the second, and and then having him be that guy. And then you know you're not you're not putting all that all that money into that position, and you still maintain your draft capital. Mm -hmm. Agree. We Agree. Know, um, yep. All right, we got two more. We got to get through in the next about eight minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, real quick. Receiver, probably second round. They could have moved up to first round. You mm -hmm. skip one. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm saving that one for last. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, Lad McConkey or Ricky Pearsall? Does the round matter or just the player? The player. The player. The player. I, I want Ricky Pearsall. I want Ricky Pearsall. If, if, if I got to choose between those two, Ricky Pearsall. Ricky Pearsall, listen, Florida quarterback hold on, was hold on, trash. Hold on, hold on. Who you like, Shannon? Vlad McConkley. Oh, that's what I thought was going to happen. A debate. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Why Pearsall, Big G? Because Florida quarterback was trash. And go back and look, <clears throat> look at Ricky Pearsall tape. Florida never had no quarterback. Ricky Pearsall was out there one hand catching them against Georgia. Out there breaking out passes. He's a crit. Dog, he's, he's Cooper Cup, bro. <laughs> Ricky Pearsall, Cooper Cup. And he faster. Ricky Pearsall run like a faux foe. Go, go back and look at the tape, dog. Y'all know I'll be in that all 22. Ricky Pearsall is a dog. He's a dog. So, so he, and he's got a Steelers mentality. Tough, hard nose, that, don't that, care. You ain't getting him off the I field. Did, I, I did hear read about that. 
Lab mm-hmm. McConkey ran a 439. Mm-hmm. Ricky Pearsall ran like a 442. Yeah, McConkey ran faster. Four, 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 one. Yeah, 441. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 441. I, four, I didn't want to. You was on a roll, so I didn't want to interrupt you. But mm-hmm. listen, McConkey is he is a baller. He's a dog. He he blocks. He yards after the catch. He drags guys. He's the mm-hmm. exact kind of player I want. Mm-hmm. I am tired of guys falling down before they get hit, floating out of bounds, mm-hmm. won't try to get an extra yard for a first down. That guy's mm-hmm. gone. He's in Carolina. Give mm-hmm. me a guy with a hard – now, I like both these kids. Mm-hmm. I'll say it right now, I like both of them. Mm-hmm. But but it's up to the Steelers to decide which one they want more. But I like mm-hmm. both of them. But for my money, from what I've watched with McCarkey, I love his physicality. Uh, Pearsall's a better route runner, but after the ball's in his hands, McCarkey's tough to bring down. Mm, big facts. I agree. Pearsall, 6'1", 190. McConkey, 6'185". Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, McConkey was 4'39". Pearsall was 4'41". Mm-hmm. A lot of similarities. Yeah, they're mm-hmm. that close. I mean, they really are. Yeah. But- and- Flip, flip the uniforms though. Put Pierce on a Georgia Bulldog uniform with them cable with them dog quarterbacks. Oh, I, I ain't arguing <laughs> it. I, like I said, I like them both. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, I think I'm a Ooh. Who the better route runner? Pearsall. Pearsall's a better route runner. Pearsall. The yak yards, it's McCarkey. Who who, yep. who, who, who who gonna play in the slot better? McCarkey's more physical. They both they both can get out in that slot. Yeah, they dog. both can play slot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not breaking the tie. I'm saying who I picked though. I think I I think I'd pick I'd pick McConkey Lad, and just mm-hmm. because I think I don't think he's better. I think they're they're both equal. Yeah. I just feel like he's more of that more of that uh, safety blanket type player. Mm-hmm. that would be in the hole underneath. I mm-hmm. think Conkey probably has – I mean, Pierce has more upside down the field and on slants and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But from what I saw watching Georgia stuff like that, McConkey is a safety blanket. He's going to get in the hole of the zone. He's going to make himself available for the quarterback. Mm-hmm. And he's a better blocker. Mm-hmm. That's okay. facts. Okay. Yeah, you can't go wrong. The last one, mm-hmm. either or. <laughs> we, started, we started this thing out, the draft thing out, with uh, the offensive tackles. Mm-hmm. You know, so we talked about the receivers with Rome and Ayuk and Pearsall and McConkey just now. Mm-hmm. Now we're gonna touch on the DBs, and with no S. Dresden, it's not your boy Wiggins. <laughs> nope. Wiggy, wiggy, wiggy. <laughs> But, hey, real quick, before we get ready to get out of here and choose between these two, Big G, get the mm-hmm. algorithms up, man. We got 205 people in here, and we got – oh, by my Take, little – Don't little, tell me we got no 205. Don't tell me we got 205 people in here. 205 people with 62 likes that I can see. Man, boy, hey. li- listen, I'm about to give them the kick rock sign. <laughs> Come on. Get the kick in, man, and hit that like button, man. What is y'all doing? Come on now, get the rhythms. Let's see the lights jump up between now and when we get out of here. All but right, real right, quick, and AFL 67, Big G got to do this in 45 seconds. 45 seconds to him, 45 seconds to Shannon. All right. So the choices between if these corners drop to the Steelers. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, would the Steelers be sitting with the, with the cat that ate the canary belly right now? Mm-hmm. If they got to choose between – Terry and Arnold and Quinion Mitchell. Oh. Big G, tell me who you taking and stop. And Shannon, tell me who you taking and stop. I'm taking Arnold, dog. Arnold, the first cornerback on the board. And stop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shannon, who you taking? Quinion Mitchell. Oh, I love it. We just listen. It's a, it's a, a disparity <laughs> between the two. And that's just a, so so now we in the now we in the war room talking it out. Mm-hmm. Big G, why you want why you want Terry on? 
Look at the tape. Go back and look at that SEC, how he was out there killing them boys. Go look, look listen, go look at the national championship game. That wasn't him out there getting cooked. Go uh, in the semifinals. Go look at the tape. He's a dog. Now, I'm not saying Mitchell's a scrub either. But, dog, Arnold, Arnold and JPJ, best cornerback combo in, in the league two years. Best in the league. <clears throat> it ain't even close. JPJ and Arnold on them corners, it's over. It's it locked down. No fly zone, whatever you want to call it. Mm. Shannon, why why Quinion? I love Quinion Mitchell. I understand. He's he's from uh he's not from a power five school. Yes, he didn't face the competition that Arnold. I mean, Arnold's a proven guy. And I and I'd be thrilled with either one of them. But Quinion Mitchell's got that dog in him. He reminds me of a stiller corner. He reminds me of a guy that's going to get in there and compete. Uh, you put him on one side and JPJ on the other, and they're going to press. Uh, you know, they can throw in some zone because Mitchell's got that explosiveness and that top end speed and that quickness that he can jump on them routes. Uh, I just think Mitchell, he was one of my perfect fits, mm. if you remember. So I have to stick with Quinion Mitchell. I, I love his attitude. I love his intensity. I love his short-term memory loss. I'm mm. a huge fan. Mm. Mm. Boy, I can't wait, man. I'm getting excited. I want to need my Christmas hat. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Come on with it. Both them Florida boys. Mm -hmm. uh, if I'm picking, well, that's a tough one. It is, man. It's hard. That's a hard one. That's a tough one. Yeah. Do we do we do we take both of them over 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 all the other corners? Yeah, definitely. Take. I, I got one thing to get influence you. Go ahead. Arnold played opposite of Kool Aid, and Arnold was the better corner. <laughs> they, he played opposite of Kool Aid. And he was better. You know he what? Was better. That didn't necessarily sell me, but it made me think. And you said he was better than Kool Aid, which is he was better. True. He was, yeah. And Kool Aid is a first round pick, in the yes. first round, but first round, yes, pick. yes. But that just says to me they played against SEC competition. Yeah. Yes. And, you know they played against some of the very receivers we talking about: Pierce, Saul, yeah. McConkie, yeah, yeah. E. Yeah. Mitchell, yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all these guys. So, yeah. and I like Terry on. And I like Quinion, mm. but I'm gonna take Terry on mm. just just for the competition. And I feel like his technique is better. I feel like Quinion Mitchell was tough, maybe a little tougher. They both tough, mm -hmm. maybe a little tougher and more physical. So I definitely get where Shannon coming from with that aspect of it and checking those boxes. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he went to school 45 minutes from Detroit. You got to be tough. Big facts, Quinion Mitchell. But one Big more fact. quick, I'm gonna try to influence you. Go ahead. Mitchell's faster, he's more physical, and he hasn't any ceiling yet. Well, I think Ooh. Arnold has. Ooh. Ooh. He is fast. I feel like Terry I had a bad day, but you know what? <clears throat> Shannon, you influenced me. I'm going back <laughs> to the wall, Big G. Mm. The big bias. <laughs> the big bias. Hey, but you can't go wrong mm. either way. Joey Porter Jr. and either one of those guys on the other side. Mm -hmm. Beasting. Mm -hmm. Facts. But, yeah, okay. So, we're going to get on out of here, man. Uh, Shannon, what you got going on this week, man? What you writing about? What you want us to look at? Watch? What's up? Well, I've actually got an article. I don't know if it'll post tomorrow. But it's about – I think the Steelers are set up for another championship run. If you look at all eight Super Bowls the Steelers have been in, there's a common denominator. And it's not all – it's not just the great players. It's how did they acquire the great players. Mm. And that comes from scouting. And I believe that the Steelers have improved their general manager – the assistant general manager, 
They've the they've given Mike Tomlin more responsibility, and they've revamped and improved their scouting department. And I go into detail about how they've done this. And I believe that the Steelers are getting on the verge, if they can solve their quarterback situation, if they have another strong draft, they are very close to being a Super Bowl contender again. So that might be posted in tomorrow. Keep an eye out for it. And then, of course, uh, we'll have uh, uh, the Steelers Hangover podcast coming up uh, Mondays at 520 now. Mm -hmm. Uh Uh-oh. Big, big fine. He didn't escape. My bad. (laughs) Hey, real quick. Thanks, Mean Joe. Uh, He'd like to know real quick y'all thoughts on, real quick, on Cooper DeJean. Find yourself, Big G. Oh, gosh. I got a big Both fine. of you. He, he, he's versatile. <laughs> he can play safety and corner. But go back and look at his tape against Big Ten receivers. Y'all, 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 y'all didn't even notice, man. I got the, I got the Cleveland Cavalier background up. That's all right. But, yeah, but, 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 uh, but, uh, but, uh, yeah, he, he can, he's versatile. He can play safety and corner. But go back and watch his tape against Ohio State, against Penn State, against Wisconsin, against Michigan. Go back and watch his tape. He was out there getting killed. <laughs> he was out there getting killed. So if he's struggling like that, he's going to struggle in the league. Shannon? I agree with Big G. Uh, I think he is a – when you talk versatile, it's I'm good at two positions, but I'm not great at none. Uh, he is not with these other cornerbacks we're talking about. He's, he's just not there. Mm-hmm. And I believe that he will actually eventually be a better safety than he is cornerback. So uh, I consider him, if I was to consider drafting him, I would go, I think of him as a safety. Mm-hmm. I agree with y'all. I like him. Last week I was, I was on him, but to, 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 to see more highlight and look at some clips and stuff, I think he's better served. As a full time, full time nickel, big mm-hmm. nickel. Mm-hmm. I think he's better with his eyes in the backfield, zone coverage. He's a zone guy, yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. Not not mm-hmm. so much that press man, but he would be. I mean, the Steelers traded back, and that's what he's looking at. Like traded back to twenty eight, like that potential trade here by with Buffalo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, twenty eight and sixty to move up to twenty. I would do that probably. Mm-hmm. If my tackle's not on the board, because mm-hmm. I can get my center in at 28 or lower and be mm-hmm. good. But uh yeah, I think he's a, a chess piece. Because mm-hmm. like Shannon said, he's good at a lot of stuff, not great at none. He would be good in the slot. He could be he could play outside sometimes, and he would be good to, to to drop back and put in his safety or have as a as a as a big dime backer as a safety too. So I like him, but he's not on the level of Mitchell or Terry, I don't even think he's better than Kool Aid. Mm. I want a press guy. He's hey, as Dresden. He's better than Wiggins, not in coverage, but just as a tackler and overall. But <laughs> big facts. I, I, I'd really be thinking between those two. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Big G, real quick, man. Thanks for rocking us with us on Pump Your Breaks podcast. Check me, Tape Boy, fresh in the, in the crew out on Friday. You all know what we get on with the homies. It's mock draft season, y'all. We got a lot of big shows coming Fridays. And don't forget to check the Know It All's podcast. We having a big mock show with the whole Know It All's crew on Sunday, bro. We going to get it in. We got them trash and them, them, them ops and all them spies. And me and Tate Boy Fresh going to roast them with the Steelers. We going <laughs> to roast them. We going to roast them on Sunday. All right, everybody, per usual, thanks for joining us. Check out all the all the fans first sports network podcast on your audio, the Steel Kirk Network. Check out all these shows you watch on YouTube. You can check out on audio, fans first sports network, and that show. Mm-hmm. SCN and that show. I mean, look it up. But yeah, until next week for the homie Big G, for the triple triple OG Shannon White. We about to get out of here. And don't forget at eight o'clock next Wednesday night to just sit down in your car and slam your brakes and join us for the Pump Your Brakes podcast. And we out.